We're glad to have Brother Mac back with us along with Steve Clifton, uh, who's, they both served together at First Baptist Jacksonville. So I want you to welcome them and be sure and uh, uh, take more notes about the way they relate to each other as well as how they build their staff and their volunteers. A great opportunity for you to take some notes, but also to dialogue with them as well in a few minutes. Thank you. Let me, um, let me start out and just share with you, you might want to take some of this down. Who are we trying to reach? Um, if you've not seen this, uh, it's great information. Who's coming into our church? A little over a year ago, I believe it was, I tasked our administrator, John, with doing something with um, all of our welcome centers around the church. Uh, he did an incredible job with that. We've got a whole new team, a whole new look, and we are capturing folks that we have not captured like we have not captured in the last 10 years that I've been, 11 years that I've been there. And uh, we're, we're catching them as they're coming in the door and we're getting a lot of them into a Sunday school class, getting information on them, uh, and it has just been unbelievably successful. And we're having more people join the church out of this group that we're capturing uh, with these first time visitors coming in. But who's coming in? Who are these people that are coming in? Who are we trying to reach? Let me give you, t and I've got to do this quickly. Let me give you what, uh, what they look like. Number one, they're a blended home. Their marriages are blended. That is, you've got mine, yours, and ours. Uh, we, we're reaching folks, we're trying to reach folks, the people that are coming in um, have blended families. You probably already are aware of that. Number two, they're spiritually mismatched. I had a deacon uh, send me a note a couple of weeks ago and he said, Pastor, I want you, if you could, I've got a couple I want you to see. He is um, a Jew, non-practicing Jew. She is a non-practicing Roman Catholic. He's in his 40s and is in the hospital for heart bypass. And um, that's what you're dealing with. Spiritually, just they're anything and everything in the world. And they have no, you don't get that couple that's, we both grew up in the same church, in the same Baptist church and uh, that kind of background. Number three, they're financially strapped. And let me tell you this. Your hollering at them about tithing is not going to help them. Uh, they desperately need somebody to show them how to manage their money and to get out of debt. This is the average person that's coming into our church and that we're out there trying to reach. Number four, they're over calendared. And let me tell you who's running their calendar. Kids, children. Um, they are stressed out. You've got this whole issue. Bob Russell wrote a great piece on this, I think about a week or two ago, on, on sports uh, taking place on Sunday mornings and what you ought to tell families about that. Uh, but our kids or their kids are basically running their schedules and they're running themselves to death trying to keep up with their kids and their kids' schedules. So they're already over scheduled. Number five, they're biblically illiterate, but let me let you in on something. 75% of the people who sit in your church every week are biblically illiterate. Um, they don't know anything about the Bible. More than 60% of Americans can't name, name either half of the Ten Commandments or the four Gospels of the New Testament. Some 80%, including born-again Christians, believe God helps those who helps themselves is a direct quote out of the Bible. 31% believe a good person can earn his way or her way into heaven. <laughs> Number six, they are ethnically diverse. Now, I was born in 57. I grew up in the 60s. I know what the 60s were, well, if you remember the 60s, um, no, anybody grew up in the sixties. Don't remember you don't, you were in a fog in the sixties. Well, I was a kid in the sixties. I do remember I lived through all of that and we live in an ethnically diverse day today, um, where couples, he's this race, she's that race. They're blended. Their families struggle with it. Other people struggle with it. 
uh, how, do we, how do we minister to them? How do we help them? So you've got ethnically diverse families. Number seven, they have special needs children. 2% of children are diagnosed with autism. That sounds mighty low to me. I don't know about you. Let me give you a couple of these. 7% are diagnosed with ADHD. That sounds low to me too. I'm ADHD, HD, double D, um, AADD. That's me. That's why I can't stand still up here. Um, but we've got a lot of ADHD kids. God just hardwired their kids. I tell parents, I have mothers that come in and just break down and cry. My kid is ADHD. I said, well, he'll probably be pastor of this church here uh, pretty soon. Um, 8% have learning disabilities. 14% have developmental disabilities. 17% of Americans experience communications disorder. That's 97% in the Baptist church. 19% of Americans are classified as a person with disability. 2% of 13 to 18 year olds are identified with anxiety disorder. Wow. Um, you've got families that are out there just struggling with, I've got kids that have special needs. Number eight, one in five have experienced some form of trauma in the home. 20 people every minute in America experience some type of domestic violence and 90% of the kids in those homes see that take place. So uh, they're struggling. Number nine, now listen, they want to be successful. And I'm not talking about in business. They want to be successful in their home. That's what they long to be. They long to be successful in their families, in their marriage, with their kids. Um, not that they want a Maserati, not that, they, not that kind of success, just to be successful in my marriage and with my kids. Number 10, they're spiritually hungry. Man, we live in a world that is spiritually starving and they are looking for some kind of answer. These are great days to be in ministry. These are great days to try to reach people for Christ and then begin to train them in Christ. 